He's got the phone. He's got the phone. He's got the phone. Puts it in his pocket. He's like, I'm not answering that thing again. So he's walking out, and he sees on the TV screen, he sees on the TV screen, he sees um, that there's been a tornado that is very rare, but has gone across the, the northern border of Indiana. And he sees, on, he sees this, like, all these cars just flipped over, thrown everywhere. And he sees in the background Scott, Scott's Honda. Like his, his Honda store had been completely destroyed by this tornado. The tornado had actually hidden all of his Honda dealerships across that area and destroyed them all. He's looking at this, he is crushed. Like, I'm gonna be in so much debt, and I mean, who even knows, you know, if, if anybody will even like me. And, and kind of, too, wrestling through like, like, why would God do this to me? I've been falling in, and like, I don't really understand that. So he gets home. He gets home, and his wife greets him at the door, she's crying. She's, she's just bawling, he's like, I know, I know, we've lost all our millions, but it, it's okay, we still have each other. And she's like, that's not why I'm crying. She says, well, today was our son's 18th birthday, as you know, and we rented this huge tent. And we're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. We're going to have a big party with all our kids there. All our kids are going to come together. They're going to have a big party. They're going to dance. And, yeah, that tornado, some of the winds from the tornado hit that tent and tilted over and killed all of his kids. Oh, my God. Whoa. I don't like this story. And so he's, he's talking to his wife, and she says, she says, why don't you just, why don't you just forget God? He hasn't done anything for you. I mean, all these awful things have happened to you. I mean, you have a lot of stuff, but just forget God, curse him, and, and die, and be done with it. Just curse God, and be done with it. And his reply to that was, well, when I was born, I came out naked, I didn't have anything, and I'll return. Naked and with nothing. Next day, goes to the doctor, figures out he has cancer. This is based on a true story. <laughs> Really? Yes. Yes, it is. And so, so he goes, he goes there, and he is, and he is crushed. So what does he do? He's like, I don't know what to do, but he remembers in Bible college, and he's still kept in contact with three of his friends. Three of his friends, they know they're good Christians. He's like, these guys are going to help me. They're going to encourage me. Maybe they can give me a loan. Maybe, but for sure, I hope they like pray for me or something. I just need some help. So he calls them up. Says, Can you get here anyway? Is there any way you can get here? They, they come, they visit him, they, they come in the door, he says, hey guys, I just need some advice, I need some help, I need whatever you guys got, I'll take it. So the first guy kind of kind of goes into him and says, what have you done that's wrong? Like, at your car dealership, were you stealing money? Were you, were you, were you at CC's? Were you, like, not paying the right, paying the wages to the people that you owed it to? Like, I know you did wrong, or else God wouldn't have punished you. So what did you do that was wrong? That's what, that's what his first friend, he says, he says, no, I haven't, I haven't done that. Like, I know, I've been, I've been falling after God, I haven't done this. Well, stop lying to me. Stop lying to me, Scott, I'm sick of it. The other guy comes in and says, when was the last time you went to church? When was the last time that, that you prayed? Have you been praying? Have you been reading the Bible enough? He says, well, what's enough, first off? And <laughs> secondly, yeah, I have. I've been, I've been chasing after God. I've been, I've been following his way for my life. I mean, I haven't been perfect, obviously. And his, and his third friend kind of just repeats the thing, same thing those two said. So he wrestles, he wrestles through this. Like, ah, you know, and he, he kind of, he's talking with God and he's saying, God, why are these people accusing me of this? I haven't done anything that's wrong. And God answers him. And God, God says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I told the sea, this is how far you can go, and, and the land, this is how far you can go? Where were you? Because surely you know, because you're, apparently you, you know everything. And he, he, just, he just bows down, and he, and he says, I'm going to be quiet. God talks to him for a little bit longer, and he just says, God, I, I humble myself before you. I want to repent of what I did. Um, and then he ends up having to pray for his three friends who have been accusing him and because God was, was angry with them. This is, uh, does anybody know the story that I'm talking about? Joe. Joe, you got it. Way to go. Um, Joe, this is a story that, that occurs in the Bible that happened really early in the Bible. Um, and I did a, a modern retelling with CCs in it. But, but it's kind of a story that, I mean, you, you hear it. You hear it now and you're like, like what? Like, what, what did, what's the point of that story? Why did I just listen to that story? And I, and I tell it to, to kind of give you, we're going to kind of go back to it and talk about it, but introduce this topic, and it's not a cheery topic, of suffering. We're going to be talking about suffering tonight. And I know, you know, oh, okay, that's, that's cheery. But I think a lot of times we as Christians don't have a biblical view of suffering. And if we did, we wouldn't see, I, I've just seen, I mean, the, honestly, I've seen a lot of my friends 
turn away from God and be like, well, God, why are you, why are these bad things happening to me? And I've seen a lot of them turn away. And I, and I hope that you guys are not that. And I hope that you, you know, as I think about the seniors in here that are, that are going to be graduating, going off to college, and probably facing, well, you definitely will be facing suffering. And people are facing suffering now, too. But just having a biblical view of it. So, so we're going to, we'll get into it. Um, my first point is that we as Christians are promised suffering. We are promised that, that suffering will happen. And it says in John 15, 18, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Jesus is telling his followers, his disciples, you're going to face suffering in this world. You're going to face, you're going to face hate from other people. And we're promised that. But I think a lot of times in our, in our Christian heads, we think, like, we think like Job did. We think, well, I don't, I don't deserve bad stuff. If I'm following God, nothing bad will happen to me. My family will get fixed. My um, relationships with my friends, I can keep those. I was talking to a guy that, that, had, that had turned away from his life of like, drugs and alcohol in jail, and he said that he just lost a lot of friends. And it was sad, and he, he still wanted to hang out with them, but he couldn't, because they were just going and doing drugs and alcohol. And, and he was like, I just couldn't. I just lost those friendships. And I think about high schoolers today. You know, I, have a, I think about you guys. That, I mean, and I see it, like, I mean, even um, driving my school bus, I see what goes on in high school. I see how high schoolers act. I see, I see the, the crap that goes on. And I, and I think about you guys, and I think, man, that must be hard. That must be hard for Olivia, for Keaton, for Emma, just for all of you guys that are here. Um, just to, like, man, to, to see those things going on, and then and maybe even lose some friendships because of, well, I'm following Jesus. And that's a, that's a suffering. But, but know that it is promised. It's something that God says will happen. If we, if we go into it expecting, well, I don't deserve suffering. I'm, I'm following Jesus. I deserve my life to be, to be perfect, to be blessed. Then we're going in with the wrong mindset. We're going in um, with the wrong mindset. One more thing on that, on that point. The, as Christians, the person that we follow is Jesus Christ. We're little Christ. That's what Christians mean. And Jesus Christ was the man who suffered more than anyone else in, in all time on earth. He suffered more than anyone else ever did. And if, you know, maybe you don't believe me, but, but think about it. Think about how before he was crucified, he had 39 lashes, one short of being killed. He had his back just like ripped up by, these, by this cat of nine tails that was just ripping the flesh off of it. And then he was forced to carry a cross up a hill and then they crucified him. They put two nails in his hands and his feet. Probably three total. And um, he, was, he was a man who suffered. A man of sorrows is what he's called in, in different passages. The suffering servant he's called in Isaiah. And Jesus was a man who suffered more than anybody physically. And still to this day, the Roman um, act of crucifixion is the worst punishment that you can that you can give legally. Like someone could die worse than like, but not legally. This was a legal action that was taken against him. It was the worst physical pain that anyone could feel. But not only physical pain, but emotional pain too. Before he was crucified, he was he was sweating tears of blood because of how much mental duress he was under. Jesus was a man of suffering, and what he calls us to do, what Jesus says to us in Matthew 16, 24, is pick up your cross and follow me. That's what he said to his disciples. Like, is that not crazy that he's calling us to suffer alongside him? Like, I'm not going to pick up my cross. I don't want to go through that. But that is what we are called to. And if we get that in our mindset, I think it's helpful. And if we get in our, our mindset like, like Job's, like Job's friends who said, well, have you been reading your Bible enough? Well, God should be blessing you then. No, we're called to suffering. We're not. God doesn't promise us, well, I'm going to bless you. And he does bless people. We see that in the Bible. But also we see stories like Job. We're, it's just suffering. It's just suffering. Okay, we're going to look at um, Romans 5, 3 through 5. Which one of you have Bibles? I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll read it. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. Romans 5, 3 through 5. It helps me. You guys listen? I got you. I'm not reading. Okay. You guys want some? Yeah, let's do it. Let's press it out. Romans 5, 3 through 5. Woo. Oh, 
Okay, 